Our Earth is sick and it has no health insurance. At least no one is willing to pay for it. But our scientists are clear. If our planet does not receive adequate treatment, it won't survive. There's no doubt that we are pushing Earth to its limit. We are breaching our planetary boundaries. The global commons are the things that all of humanity share together. It's the atmosphere, it's the species, it's the high oceans, it's everything that, that we own together. But because no individual nation or group owns it, we tend to spoil it. We're here today in Danan with all of the countries in the world in order to ask, how goes the battle? How are we doing after 25 years of the GEF? We're doing good things, but the scale of the problem keeps growing. The size of the world economy is twice what it was when the GEF was set up. In the next 15 years, we're going to double the amount of total infrastructure in the world. Think of the pressure that puts on the global environment. And that's why incremental change is not enough. We need systemic change across all the major spheres of economic and social life. Protecting our global commons is not a straightforward affair. To apply solutions to a system, we need a holistic approach. Many environmental solutions to one problem can themselves be problems in another area of the environment. The environment is so systemically, if you will, ecosystemically interconnected that um, you know, pushing you know, one button here uh, or pulling on one string there will, will cause some unintended consequence elsewhere in the system. We need a change, a transformational change. Ignoring environmental risks means that we are ignoring our own health. Electronic waste, that means mobiles that we've used and thrown away, computers that we've used and thrown away. There's now more gold in the devices we've thrown away than there is in mines. This waste comes back to us. And it's very clear that when these wastes are not properly managed, they are dumped in the rivers, in the sea, on land, then they contaminate the food that we eat, they contaminate the air that we breathe, and they contaminate even the waters that we swim in or we drink. Only a truly global movement can save our planet in our own lives. Despite the slow progress, we are becoming smarter about how we spend our money. The countries themselves are recognizing that they need to tackle problems in an integrated way. So the science group that I represent evaluates every single major project that comes through. Well, 40% of the Jeff projects are now multifocal area, and that is they're trying to find solutions to tackle the problems identified by more than one of the multilateral environmental agreements at the same time. Four major shifts in our socioeconomic life are needed to stop the tragedy of the global commons. We need to transform our cities, rethink our food and agriculture systems, decarbonize our energy, and implement circular economic models. Why is it not happening? What holds us back? Don't go to the community by saying, yo, I have a PhD or I have the knowledge, so that's the way, it's my way, you have to. No, it's we, together, listening and propose a solution and go together. Systemic change is like learning a foreign language. It's easy to learn the basics, but you need experience to become good at it. It requires confidence and practice. Thanks to the GIF 29 donors, we have secured 4.1 billion US dollars for the next four years. We have the courage and resources to safeguard the global commons. Protecting our global commons is about inclusive partnerships and development coherence. We spend more money on ice cream than protecting our oceans and forests. We need better investments. A healthy planet is our best bet against poverty and inequality. It's the only way we will leave no one behind.